Among some of the changes that have been happening to Escape from Tarkov recently to the recoil and the movement system have also been considerable changes to armor and helmets, and three armors in particular got a very specific buff unique to them that might actually make some of the heaviest armors in the game worth running. So let's talk about it. So the three armors that got this specific change were the Thor Class 6 Body Armor, the Gen 4 Full Protection, and the Redot M. And the specific change that they got is in addition to their total durability or their total armor points. That stacked with all the other changes have been really significant for these armors. But before we can understand how that makes them so good, we have to make sure that we understand how armor works in Tarkov. So let's do a really quick TLDR of armor in Escape from Tarkov. There will be a timestamp down below if you want to skip to just the specific armors that I'm talking about. However, I do think that a refresher is really worth it to fully understand all that's going on with these changes. So armor is broken into four main characteristics. The armor zones, which is really self-explanatory. What does the armor cover? And it's up to you to decide if you want armors to cover just your uh, vital zones and therefore taking damage and maybe fragmentation or blacking out limbs, or if you want the armor to cover more of you, but then sacrificing that armor when you get hit in a non-lethal zone. Secondly is the class. Once again, we should all know about the armor classes. The higher, the better. It goes up to six. And generally speaking, your ammo should have 10 times the armor class to reliably pen it. So if your enemy has class five armor, you want an ammo that has about 50 pen to really reliably penetrate that armor. Now that is definitely not something to get bogged down on or be beholden to. 762 by 39 BP is regarded as one of the best ammos in the game. It has 47 pen and it can absolutely shred class five and class six armor. And that's because you're shooting it full auto and and consecutive shots can really bring somebody down quick. The third thing is the armor material, and this is where things get a little bit more complicated. I'll read a little excerpt from the wiki here. The durability damage taken from bullets is based on the penetration value of the armor and the armor level of the armor, multiplied by the ammo's armor damage percentage and the armor material's destructibility percent. Confused yet? Yeah, well, me too. This kind of opens up the back end, all of these values and things that the game doesn't really tell us. And honestly, it's not, while it is really cool, it's probably not worth diving all the way down that rabbit hole because most of this stuff is just gonna present itself in a way that you can feel or understand on your own. The big takeaway here is that the armor material plays two parts. The destructibility, which we'll talk about again in a little bit, and the repairability of an armor. Repairability is important for two things because certain armors can be really expensive to repair, whether you're paying in rubles or whether you're using an armor repair kit, they can use a lot of that kit. And then the other thing is how much of the armor's value is gonna be retained when repairing. Something like a gazelle, as you may know, after one or two times repairing that, uh, it's going to have lost so much of its durability that it is no longer really worth it and worth using. Whereas some things like a Cora, a TV-110, or even a slick, you can repair multiple, multiple, multiple times and still retain 90 to 95% of the original durability, making that armor still very functional. So pay attention to those armor materials. And when you right click to repair before you actually hit the repair, you can see how much of it is going to be repaired. And you can kind of start to understand what materials are good for repairability and what are not so good. Finally, the fourth characteristic of armor is the armor points or the durability of the armor. Now, this effectively shows how much of a beating the armor can take. But there are some really important things to note here when we talk about durability or armor points. The class of the armor is the only thing that matters for the very first shot. As long as an armor is at its maximum durability, so you found it out of a ground stash or you bought it from the trader, it's at its absolute maximum durability, the percent chance that a bullet will pen will be the same across all armors of that class. For example, the 5.56 round M856A1 has about 37 pen, I believe. It has a 1.2% chance to pen any class five armor. It has a 1.2% chance to pen a Corund, which only has 45 uh, durability points, and it has a 1.2% chance to pen a Gen 4 Assault, which may have 75 armor points. Once again, this only applies to the very first shot. As soon as that armor gets shot, now the armor points and the durability of the armor is going to really matter because that round that hit that first shot took away some of that armor's durability. Well, if it took away five points of durability on a Corund, that's a higher percentage of the total durability than on a Gen 4. And because the Gen 4 now has a higher percentage of its total durability, it's going to be more effective at absorbing follow-up shots. So another example, the second shot of 5.6A1 has an 8% chance to pen a core end, but only a 3.5% chance to pen a Gen 4. So that first shot, it's going to be more dependent on the class. 
all shots after that are going to factor in those other things, the material and how many armor points that armor has left. Now, this is partially where that destructibility comes into play. The materials will have a subtle difference in how much of a beating that armor can take and how quickly it gets destroyed, but that is only part of the equation here. Take the Corant and the Gazelle, for example. They are both class 5 armors. They both cover the same zones. The two differences here are the materials that they're made out of and how many armor points they have. Despite repairing worse and having a slightly more destructible material, the Gazelle is widely regarded as a better choice if they're both full because it has 20 additional armor points. The Koran takes the win when we talk about reuse and repairability. You can only repair a Gazelle once maybe twice, but probably not without it really suffering and not being nearly as effective. But when it comes to a Korund, it can be repaired multiple times, only losing one or two of those armor points. Also, a quick note here when we talk about repairing armor, it's important to note that the first number in the, the fraction there, you know, 40 out of 80 or 20 out of 60, the first number is going to be its effective durability. If you repair an armor, if let's say a slick has 80 durability and you've beat it down and you've repaired it so many times, so now you when you repair it, it says 40 out of 40, it's always going to be referencing the maximum durability of that armor. So a 40 out of 40 slick is only 50% as effective as a 80 out of 80 slick, and a 40 out of 80 slick functions exactly the same. Now that's why you repair, because you can take a 40 out of 80 slick, repair it, and get it up to maybe a 75 out of 80, increasing that durability. But it's important to know that as you continue to repair an armor, even if that fraction is a one over one, if it's 60 out of 60 or 50 out of 50, you always have to reference it to its original maximum durability to give you kind of a ballpark of how well it's going to perform. Now, with all that being said, this is where the changes to these specific armors come into play. These three armors here, the Thor armor, the Redut, and the Gen 4 full, have had all of their hit points, their total durability, increased pretty significantly. All of these armors fall into a category of really heavy armors that not a whole lot of people like to use. Even the Thor armor at class six, it's expensive and it's really, really heavy. And there were tons of downsides to using these heavy armors. Well, all of those downsides have been at least adjusted or taken a look at recently. The weight of these armors is still significantly high and the weight hasn't changed. However, the amount of weight that causes your PMC to be overweight has been changed recently, and I believe it was increased by like five kilograms or something like that. So now you can wear more and not be overweight, and that slight adjustment means wearing these armors don't have as much of an impact on how overweight you are. Additionally, the movement speed. All of these heavy armors had really, really significant movement speed penalties. Well, across the board, across all armors and helmets, the movement speed penalty and the ergo hit to your character have all been halved. So for instance, before this change, a gazelle had a 10% movement speed penalty. Well, that's been halved down to 5%, but the Thor armor, the class six armor, had a 28% movement speed penalty, and now that's been halved down to 14, which means a wearing a Thor armor, the class six armor right now, is not that much more of a movement speed penalty than what a gazelle was for the past several wipes. So this is actually a really significant change also to the ergo hit to your character. This makes them much more maneuverable and makes you feel like you're much more in control of your character when wearing these heavy armors. And then the third thing was protection. A lot of times these really heavy armors had tons of downsides, but not a whole lot of upsides. They didn't really offer much protection. It was still just one, two, three bullets before these things were absolutely destroyed. Well, now with the armor points being increased, these offer quite a bit more protection. So so what I did was I set up kind of a test to see how these performed. I wanted to test the Redut armor because it's going to be the most accessible of the ones that were changed. And then I tested the Gen 4 full directly against the Korund, the Korund being the class five armor with the lowest total durability at 45. And now the Gen 4 full has the highest total durability of any class five armor and that is 110. I tested them all against three different ammos, 5.6 A1, M80 and BP. 5.6 A1 has 37 pens, so something that is going to be much more early to mid game. M80 is a very common round and a very usable round at 41 pen. And then 7.62 BP is kind of your meta round at 47 pen. Now, this is not an extremely scientific test at all, more of an example. All of these armors got to the place where their durability was so low that the armors were going to pen 100% of the time. And then also there's all sorts of RNG here. A 1% chance to pen is still a 1% chance to pen. So during my test, maybe 
this armor got a really bad roll and it pinned on this shot when it wouldn't normally. There's also tons of variables of bleeds and fragmentation. So this isn't a one-to-one -one comparison onto your survivability, but I wanted to just see the difference between these armor. Now in my test with 5.6A1 with 37 pen, the Koran took five rounds and it was completely at zero. The Gen 4 full took 13 shots to get to 9.1. I was running out of heals, which means 14 to 15 shots to get down to zero. And the Redut had 12 shots to get to zero. With M80, the Koran took three shots before the armor was zeroed out. The Gen 4 took nine and the Redut took eight. And with 7.62 BP, the Koran took three rounds to get to zero. The Gen 4 took eight and the Redut armor took six. Through my test, basically what I deduced was once again, with all of the RNG in this game, with all of the bleeds and everything, and with the blunt damage applied, even if an armor does absorb a shot, most of the time your survivability is only going to be two, three, maybe maximum of four shots with some of these better ammos before you're going to die, no matter what the durability of the armor is. However, the big thing here is your ability to re-engage into another fight. So something like 7.62 BP. Yes, the Gen 4 could technically take eight rounds before it got down to zero, but if you took eight rounds directly, you were gonna die either way. But if you took two rounds and then you killed your enemy and you were able to heal up, well, now you have a maximum, dur maximum health thorax and the durability of the Gen 4 is still high enough that it actually provides additional protection if you get into another fight. If you get into a fight with somebody with BP or or M80 with a Corund and he shoots you twice, that Corund is basically just a paperweight at this point. So if you win the fight, heal up your Thorax and you zero their armor, well, you're kind of out of luck. So that's where the Redut and the Gen 4 are really gonna shine. These heavier armors that have the higher durabilities, it's your ability to get into another engagement or several engagements throughout a raid and continue to heal yourself up. So I'm very interested in these changes. I like them a lot. I think the uh, Gen 4 full will be an interesting thing. You can barter for this for three lions. It's pretty expensive, but with how much it covers and how many damage points it does, I think this could be useful. I think the Redut armor is definitely going to become one of the most useful class five armors because with all those changes to the movement speed and the ergo and the weight, and now this being an 80 durability armor that you can buy straight up from the traders that protects your stomach, I think this is gonna have a lot of value. The Thor armor I didn't test because ultimately what it becomes is just as a Brawlo with 10 less durability, but slightly better stats when it comes to movement speed and turning. The Zabralo used to be the meta armor and then they kind of changed a lot of stuff and now you can't buy the Zabralo anymore. You can buy the Thor armor for a little over 400,000 rubles Class 6 armor is going to be pretty insane, especially since a lot of the higher tier ammos were removed. So this might be something, maybe especially in a squad, if you have somebody leading with this armor that maybe somebody can ditch it if you die, uh, this could be a very effective armor. It's still very heavy. It's still very expensive, but I think this will be one of the best class 6 armors, especially since you can buy it for cash. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you're going to start running any of these armors. I think this is really interesting. I like that if there isn't one specific meta armor, I like that meta being a tier of armor armors or a tier of weapons. And then depending on your play style, you can pick one of anything in that tier. So let me know if these armors are something you might be running in the future, or if you would like any additional changes. If you like this video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord's an awesome place to be. Thank you again for stopping by, and I'll definitely see y'all on the next one.